this run today at Tony Raymond with his famous and patented charge, but Arnie today had just fell a bit short when he had trouble at 16 and 17. Oh, uh, that's right, uh, George. I, uh, the 16th, I had the wrong club off the tee, tried to stretch a four iron into the green and put it to the right, hit a bad chip, uh, missed the putt, and then 17, I uh, three putted, and of course, I figured that it was, things were in bad shape when yeah. I did that. Uh, I played good, though, and it's, uh, it was a little bit more encouraging to me to get going again and get feeling like really playing, and uh, I thought for a while I might be able to get through it today. Well, if you could have put two shots home here on 18, it could have gotten very interesting. Well, uh, I was trying to do that. I pulled the uh, second shot a little bit at 18, or it would have been up. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you had it to do over again, and of course you don't, would you have hit the wood on 17 as you did? Well, uh, of course, uh, I doubt it very much. I think that it's a uh, it's a iron hole off the tee. I pulled my iron shot, or I would have had a uh, very good opportunity to go right at the pin. Uh, and it's a narrow hole, and I watched both the other fellows hit it to the right, and I didn't want to do that. I knew you had not much of a chance from there. No way at all. Well, two consolations, Arnie, as we would all see it. First of all, your game definitely coming back, which must be tremendously encouraging. And secondly, that will check for $17,000, which is not too bad. Well, thank you, George. I'm uh, looking forward to... Uh, playing a little more this year yet. Well, all your fans are looking forward to seeing you continue to play great golf, and I know it'll all come back to you. Congratulations, Annie, on a great run. You really thrilled the gallery today. Thank you very much. Now let's get back to the game in live action. That was Jim Free chipping, and he goes two feet past. He'll have that for his par. Joe Camel now, six feet. Well, here's Bird. Back to Middlecoff. These are level putts. <laughs> but that's about all you can say about them, isn't it? Well, if I had Tony Lima, of course, it would be the smoothest <laughs> looking putt I ever saw. But the one that uh, Joe Campbell has, Jack, what is it, about 12 or 13 feet? Campbell says, looks to me, it'd be about six or seven here, Carrie. Well, this means just a whole bunch of money to him. He does lay three, if I'm not mistaken, putting for a birdie. And if he can make this putt, he finishes second by himself rather than a three-way tie for third and it's a, worth several thousand dollars big putt for joe camel suddenly come back to him strongly in these last six weeks, and he finishes strongly here. Third place for Joe Camel, two under par. He isn't happy a little bit, is he? Jack Whitaker, I think that Joe Campbell, about the middle of May, was really almost in financial trouble, and since then he's won about $40,000, so he's that happy. <laughs> Jim Free now is going to cut out before Lima. That a boy, Jim, par five. And Jim Free finishes at four over par. 288. And he throws the ball halfway down the 18th fairway. As Tony Lima now with his birdie putt of about four feet. I guess it is kind of easy at that, Doctor, at this point, isn't it? Well, it's the only putt Tony's ever had, I'm sure, that's right into the teeth of the grain that looks absolutely beautiful. Three putts to win from six feet. 35,000. And he's still not mad. Five. And the new champion, Tony Lima, Finishes this tournament at five under par and is the new Carling World Golf Champion. 279, five under par for Tony Lima. The winner of the second annual Carling World Golf Championship is Tony Lima at five under par. We'll be right back with more news from Pleasant Valley Country Club.
All right, here's the scene at the 18th green of Pleasant Valley Country Club as Tony Lima has just finished at five under par to be the new champion of the Carling World Golf Championship. It has been a tremendous tournament, one we told you in which the foreign players and the American players all played stupendously wonderful golf against sometimes bad weather conditions and other times perfect weather conditions. Let's read some scores for you here. Bobby Nichols, the defending champion, finished at three over. Jack Nicklaus finished at seven over. Ben Hogan finished nine over. Paul Harney, the home pro, at five over. Charlie Sifford and Claude King, the next football coach, finished at two over. Homero Blancas, the young man from Houston, whom you're going to hear more and more about, finished at even par, along with Dave Moir, the current PGA champion. Sam Sneed, putting with a driver and a two iron uh, from the 10th hole on today, finished at one under, along with Gary Player. Then Joe Camel, the big blonde boy from Purdue, finishing at two under in third place. Arnold Palmer, who really shook it up here this afternoon, finishing in second place, three under. And of course, your champion at the top, Tony Lima at five under. Dave Marr and Arnold Palmer there now, getting ready for the presentation ceremonies across the 18th green. And while we're waiting here, we'd just like to remind you that CBS Television will bring you more championship golf throughout the year, beginning on December 25th, the third year in a row, the CBS Golf Classic will come to you, and this time it will come from the lovely La Costa Country Club in Southern California. We have over there Dave Marr and Arnold Palmer and all the zone representatives. Uh, qualification for the Carling uh, was made uh, by zone. Asia and the Far East, Australasia, which includes Australia and New Zealand, South America, Africa, Europe, Canada, Great Britain, and Ireland, and of course, the United States. That's Mr. Cosmingola of Pleasant Valley Country Club there, who thanks we would like to express at this point. He and Ray Bear of Pleasant Valley have been just wonderful hosts for this tournament. Also to Paul Harney, the home pro, to Dick Taylor, the tournament director, and of course, special thanks to Doc Giffen of the PGA, who never fails to supply the working press with all that we need. <laughs> Mr. Henry Russell, the president of Carling Brewery, right behind Mr. Mingola. As the champion, Mr. Tony Lima is coming across, so let's go down to the 18th green and George Rogers. Tony? You look like you're flying the mail to Chicago there, my friend. I feel like I'm on Germany right now. <laughs> In fact, I think I'm flying higher than they are, George. Well, congratulations to you. It must have been a tremendous win. Carrie Middlecoff was saying earlier today, Tony, that you didn't really even feel up to coming to this golf tournament. Your game wasn't quite sharp, and you didn't feel well physically, and yet you come here and win it all. That's true, George. That just goes to show you what a, what a great, crazy game this is. I really, uh, before the tournament, I got here on Monday, and I played Tuesday, and I was playing so poorly, and I was so tired that I even skipped playing on Wednesday, mm -hmm. which I've never done before. I felt awful, but uh, as the week progressed, I felt more rested. Uh, the tee shots were a lot straighter, and uh, the putting started working. So, heck, I feel great right now. Well, I'll bet you do. just feel so good. It isn't even funny. How did you feel down at the 15th hole? Well, I, uh, I, I knew that Arnie had uh, made it to time me there, and I tried to knock mine in. I knocked it over. I thought uh, that he was making another one of his charges, and I thought that... Uh, if I was to stand still, I was going to feel somebody going by me awful fast. And uh, <laughs> when he bogeyed uh, 